This is the October 2020 episode of Core Safety TV, brought to you directly from the National Mining Association in Washington, D.C. We would be hard pressed these days to find a mining company that doesn't have at least one drone or UAS in its field operations. UAS, Unmanned Aerial System. It's obvious why drone technology is so important. It keeps miners safe and out of harm's way. It provides a new level of data collection and it can dramatically slash the cost of exploration. Some of the most obvious UAS mining applications include mapping deposit sites, surveying mines, exploring for minerals, monitoring stockpile volumes, tracking equipment, assisting in search and rescue, and providing time-lapse photography and video. 2019 was the safest recorded year in mining's history, according to the Mine Safety and Health Administration. And that could be partly attributed to the increased use of automation, artificial intelligence, and robotics. UAS programs are certainly a big part of that. I'd like to introduce you now to Steve Weininger. He's a corporate lead pilot and instructor at Freeport McMoran's UAS program. Hello, Steve. Thank you for joining us today on Core Safety TV. Well, Nelson, thank you for having me. I appreciate uh, being on and, and being able to discuss our UAS program here at Freeport McMoran. So let's start with that. Tell us about the history and the size of the UAS program. Sure, sure. Yeah, we, uh, I believe we started about in 2015. Uh, it was a small group here in, in uh, Tucson, Arizona, the technology department here for Freeport. Uh, and really, they, they started by investigating the use cases, right? How could drones be useful uh, in the mining industry? Uh, eventually, it, it kind of progressed to where they decided, I think it's time to hire an internal pilot. Currently, company-wide, we're at about 150 pilots. Uh, in North America, that's probably around 75, maybe 80 pilots here in North America. 150 pilots flying drones at various mine locations. Now that's impressive. How is the UAS program currently structured? Well, uh, you, we have a, a corporate aviation department uh, who, who kind of oversees the program. Uh, they're also responsible for our manned assets uh, that we have in the company. Uh, and from there, we have our, our, our core group of experts uh, consisting of myself, uh, Tyler Wolf as our senior surveyor, and Dylan Shorthouse as our, uh, our team supervisor. Essentially from there, we're kind of responsible for creating the training protocols, best practices, use cases, uh, and developing those things. And, and really our, our focus is to, to find technologies, prove that they work, and then get them out of our hands and into the hands of our operators at the sites. At the sites, we have a site lead who is kind of responsible for being the liaison between us and the mine itself. So and that includes the, the mine managers, stakeholders, and the pilots there at each site. Okay, so now tell us a little bit about the types of drones that you use at Freeport McMoran. It looks like you brought a few. Sure, I've got a, a few drones here that I can show you. The aircraft that really kicked it off for us, uh, this is our fixed wing, it was a Mavic, uh, Maverick uh, made by Prioria Robotics. Uh, this aircraft really um, was the first one purchased by FMI and that was about five years ago, really when they kind of started kicking things off. We use this aircraft for doing survey, photogrammetry, um, and also just some, some video shots. Um, we eventually moved on from the fixed wing aircraft and um, started doing some mapping with uh, this particular aircraft most people will be familiar with. It's the largest selling aircraft on the planet, really. Uh, and this is the, the Phantom IV. Uh, it's a very versatile aircraft. It's capable of producing really nice uh, surveys, but it also uh, video, really. 
Uh, one of the first uh, use cases we, we started with at Freeport was filming our blasts. This guy could get in there, super stable, and it can film those blasts in really high resolution and get those blasting engineers the information that they needed on how successful that blast was and if there were any issues. And that's really what kind of kicked it off for us. We eventually moved into the realm of underground, uh, which is with our Elios aircraft that, that you can see here. This aircraft is capable of flying underground in GPS denied environments, um, in confined spaces. And each time you send this aircraft into one of those, you're taking a human out of the way of some danger, right? Uh, we're super proud of, of this guy. This technology is, is fairly new in the underground sector. It's probably one of the more faster growing technologies. There is a real demand for it around the world and especially in the mining industry. And companies have really started to take off and develop new technologies around that. Um, one of our workhorses here at uh, the Technology Center is really the Microdrones MD4-3000. This aircraft can carry approximately 11 pounds, can carry LiDAR payloads, photogrammetry payloads, very high-end photogrammetry payloads. So we are able to, to get really high-resolution imagery. Um, in this aircraft, we were actually able to petition the FAA for permission to fly above the regulated 400 feet of altitude. We're actually allowed to fly up to 1,100 feet, which really helps us cover way more ground uh, and, and be faster with our processing. Okay, Steve, so now let's talk a little bit about the safety advantages of using unmanned aerial systems like these. Sure, so essentially anytime you put one of these aircraft into the air, you're taking a human out of danger's way. A survey that's being conducted, uh, you know, with a drone you can do this survey in about 15 minutes uh, for, for smaller surveys. Whereas if you do that with the traditional uh, survey methods, you're walking around for, you know, two, three, sometimes four hours taking shots in, uh, in dangerous areas. You know, the mine is a, a dangerous place and, and we do a lot of work to make sure that it's safe. And these drones, every time you put them in the air, you're saving not only time, but the time that people are gonna be out actually in the field, walking around toes and crests, uh, high walls, haul truck traffic, you name it. So even if it's just to go up and, and take a picture of a power line, it's, it's saving two hours of, of a, a gentleman going out there in a bucket truck and being lifted you know, 70 feet in the air to look at a capacitor. Um, so just about every aspect of drone operation is safety related. And from an economic standpoint, there's a real cost advantage for mining companies that decide to use drones. Is that correct, Steve? It really is. And, you know, we spoke about survey. And really, survey is one of the biggest use cases and really the biggest return on investment uh, economic-wise uh, for, the, for the drones. Uh, traditional survey... Uh, is probably going to cost you just about double of what it's going to cost for a drone survey. Uh, and we realized fairly quickly here at Fre Freeport MacMoran, if we're able to do those surveys in-house, that instead of using a contractor, that further reduces that cost by at least another 50%. And you guys are tracking the activities of your pilots as well. Really, it's, it's all very organized. Uh, we have a, a software package that we use here to help us keep track of what flights have been done. Uh, the pilots, you know, they're, they're out there flying and they're, they're making these products and, and, and getting this return on investment. Uh, and they need credit for the hours that they're out there flying. So we make sure that, that uh, they're tracking their hours. Each aircraft, we know exactly how many hours it has on it. Each battery, um, we, we know how many times that battery has been cycled, which is really one of your bigger maintenance pieces for, uh, for these type of aircraft at least. Uh, so everything's very tracked and, um, and, and taken care of and, and really analyzed to make sure that we're getting the full benefit out of, uh, out of UAS. Hey Steve, we were talking about this earlier. Tell our viewers a little bit about drone mining surveys and the data processing software that you use. A drone mining survey is essentially the end result is the same as a, a terrestrial survey, right? It used to be, and it still is, it's still necessary for 
a person with a roving GPS monitor to go out and take ground shots to, to map out an area of the mine, whether it be a stockpile, a leech pad, uh, a high wall, uh, anything of that nature. And what drones do uh, in the most simplistic of terms is you fly the aircraft in a lawnmower type pattern and you're taking pictures at a constant rate. And then you put those pictures into a bit of software that stitches them all together, utilizing high precision GPS coordinates for each of those images that then can be triangulated and a 3D point cloud can be created. From that 3D point cloud, you, you can also create your digital terrain models, your to topographic maps. The end result is essentially a much more detailed than a survey much more detailed than, say, a uh, traditional survey would be. And what type of data processing software do you use for that? So we use a variety of, of programs, one of those being PIX4D, another being Stratus. Uh, Trimble Stratus is a, a really useful tool for us. Um, and really, it comes down to usability, right? So PIX4D is a big workhorse. It requires a lot of computing power, but it's something we have full control over the processing and, and how it's done. Where Stratus is really a great tool for each individual mine site. They make it super easy to upload your data. Uh, they process it for you, usually have it uh, completed within a 24-hour period, somewhere th thereabouts. And then it's easily shareable to anyone on the mine. And really that's the most important aspect. Uh, we wanna be able to get this data into people's hands and, and as quickly as possible so that they can make their, their analysis on that data. Okay, so last question, Steve. I understand that you take that data from the drones and you use it to create maps that are really essential for mining operations. Can you tell us a little about that, please? Sure, so an ortho mosaic is, is really, it's, uh, it's a picture that's made from a lot of pictures that are all stitched together um, and also ortho rectified, which basically just means it's tied to earth, right? We've taken those pictures and created that with accurate GPS coordinates. It's a two dimensional image that you can actually take measurements off of and it's tied to earth. So you know where this point is and where that point is on earth. A 3D model is, is essentially created in the same way, and it's, it utilizes triangulation to create three-dimensional points from each pixel that the camera has, whether it be a 20 megapixel camera, a 42 megapixel camera, and it stitches all those images together, figures out where each of those pixels are in space, and then creates a three-dimensional model of that. So in traditional survey methods, you know, you're, you're getting within you know, ten t two tenths uh, or a tenth of a foot of each point that you survey. And that point are probably going to be spread you know, every 10, every 20 feet, possibly in a grid, or maybe it's just along the toes or crest of, uh, of a high wall. Uh, with drone imagery, you get the same precision where every point or every pixel that has been captured throughout the entire area of your survey is going to be accurate within two tenths of a foot in most cases. Of course that varies depending on uh, your camera parameters and how high you're flying, but generally speaking you can get within two tenths of a foot of accuracy for a point every two to five centimeters depending on your camera and, and flight height. You know, we can create contour maps off of the 3D point clouds, digital terrain models, which are a little more sophisticated than a digital surface model, right? You get a little more detail in there. Those are all things, uh, depending on what the project is and, and the need, uh, those are definitely all things that we use here at Freeport. Okay, Steve, I want to thank you for giving us this great information and these insights into the UAS program at Freeport McMoran. Really great, and I'm sure we'll talk again sometime soon. Not a problem, Nelson. Uh, I appreciate your time. So Steve asked me earlier to make a point of telling you also that the entire UAS program at Freeport is really a collaborative effort between the corporate office, the liaisons, site leads, lead pilots, and all of the 150 pilots that are out there flying aircraft virtually every day. He also said that they've logged over 7,000 flights in the last three years, and that equates to about 2,000 hours. They average about 20 hours of flying time each week, 
and most flights only last about 15 minutes or so. So obviously we're talking about a significant number of flights to reach those 20 hours. Now, up next, it's time for us to do a quick overview of Core Safety's module number six, emergency management. Take a look. An effective safety and health management system is designed to prevent incidents from occurring. However, a well-designed, trained, and tested emergency management system is also necessary. That's because even if your company finally achieves zero incident performances, there will always be the potential for uncontrollable factors ranging from earthquakes to heart attacks. Emergency management includes emergency prevention, what do you need to do to prevent a non-emergency from becoming an emergency? Planning. What can go wrong, both expected and unexpected, and how should you respond? Emergency resources. What materials, equipment, information, and people do you need in order to deal with the emergency? Training. Who needs to do what when an emergency occurs? Coordination and communication. What government agencies and non-governmental stakeholders need to be involved and how do you coordinate to manage the emergency with key groups? For example, the media. Where will they be staged? And how will updates or briefings be provided? Or families. How will you ensure their privacy? And how will you meet their needs? Where will you put families on site so they don't have to interact with the media? How will communications be conducted with the families? And finally, recovery. Once the real emergency is addressed, how do you recover? These plans should consider potential impacts to the workforce, the public, the environment, and company assets. Good management plans can prevent a worsening of an emergency and by protecting responders can prevent additional incidents from occurring. Remember, your company must have the capability to respond appropriately to emergency and crisis situations. You can learn more about module number six by going to our website at coresafety.org. And in November, we'll continue with Core Safety's module number seven, Culture Enhancement. Until then, please be sure to follow our updates on Facebook and on Twitter. For Core Safety and the National Mining Association, I'm Nelson Duffel. I'll see you here again next month. In the meantime, please be safe out there, and thanks for watching. Special thanks to Freeport McMoran and the UAS program. To share one of your safety stories, videos, or photos, email us at info at coresafetytv.org.